Because look, if we're just gonna use fascist toward anyone we dislike. We don't. All right, then the word doesn't we actually don't. mean anything. Okay, what do you want? It does. <laughs> we don't, and it does. So, you know. I dislike you, you Anna, <laughs> and I don't call you a fascist. He said that about the Muslim ban. He tried to implement the Muslim ban. And then what happened, Jink? What happened after that? We fought back. <laughs> right. And, uh, Stupid uh, logic. People went to the airports, good Americans. No, no, that didn't matter at all. I'm going to say wannabe dictator. Uh, sure, you can say uh, wannabe dictator, but I don't even think he wants to be a dictator. Of course he does. That's what you do when no. you lose an election and you go, oh, I got what? fake electors. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, hit like, comment, subscribe. It really helps us out, and I appreciate everybody who does that. Then with the remaining time we have, I am curious. I'm very curious. Is it an Adam? No, I guess, no, even even more interesting to me. Temple topic. Anna Kasparian. Well, yes, okay. I, I am curious. Oh, yeah. So, so that was a rough one. OK, Let, let's let's just watch a little bit of this in, in this election. Am I losing my mind? Yes. Is she? <laughs> Any, all right. Akana boy, is she? She's lost her way. I would say, peace go. She no no. She's not in the process of losing her mind. The the. I just want to be clear about the syntax. She says, "Am I losing my mind?" You've already lost your way, or you never had your way. So just to be clear on on why I think that that statement is wrong. Okay. In feeling that this hyperbolic rhetoric is not helpful. Yeah, well, 50-50, in my opinion. So when uh, Debbie Dingell says uh, he's going to start internment camps. All right, Cenk is reasonable, so let's go to Anna. You know why they pretend that he didn't say that? Because that sounds uncomfortable, because it's obviously bigoted. Okay, he did say that. Donald Trump says a lot of dumb crap, okay? A lot of hateful crap, a lot of dumb crap, a lot of undemocratic crap. But like, let's just finish the rest of the story, right? Because he said that about the Muslim ban. He tried to implement the Muslim ban. And then what happened, Jenk? What happened after that? We fought back. <laughs> right. And, uh, Stupid uh, logic. People went to the airports, good Americans. No, no, that didn't matter at all. Okay, yes, it, that well, action, uh, I know it makes sense. Uh, <laughs> what, and, and remember, uh, so I watched Sitchin Adam's coverage of our reaction there, and I reacted to the whole thing. And he's like, I can't believe, I can't believe, uh, Pisco would go on and say that Anna is denigrating the work done by Democrats. She never did that. She is. She absolutely is. In this moment, she is saying the lawyers who went down to go give assistance to people who were blindsided. This was, I was actually out of the country when this happened, and everyone was losing their goddamn minds at the first version of the, of the Muslim ban. Um, and for her to be like, it didn't matter. It didn't matter that they were pushing with litigation uh, that – put restrictions on this ban that made them, you know, narrow it, narrow it, narrow it, narrow it until it was, you know, it was able to pass muster at five, four on the Supreme court in a much more reduced fashion than it, than it had been. Yes. I find that that work was good work. That work had an impact that was fighting back. And Anna is saying that didn't matter. That shit didn't matter. It didn't matter that he tried to do a religion based restriction on immigration which the Supreme Court said would almost certainly be unconstitutional. They, they, they were saying that that's not what the, the travel ban was. But, but what Anna is saying and acknowledging is that's what he was trying to do. She's, also, have this, go ahead. she's also using the strength of our institutions as a way to sort of insulate him from criticism. And it, yeah. it, it, it's exactly the, it's the same exact argument that Ben Shapiro used in his debate yep. with Sam Harris that we reviewed Word on the stream today. Practically verbatim, Hutch. Practically yeah. verbatim. Well, I mean, look, and this is, I mean, I know people hate these comparisons, but it, it just, the reason people hate these comparisons is because they align so well, but only up to a certain point because we don't live in the future, right? But in 1923, Hitler did the attempted coup of the government. This is the equivalent Beer of like push. living. Yeah. This is the equivalent of living in 1925 and saying, well, look at when he, look, he tried to coup the government in 23 and nothing, look, that got stopped. So what's the big, yeah, I'm voting for him. He's going to bring back a uh, manufacturing. This yeah, he like, tried a Muslim just, ban, but it didn't work. If yeah, you, like, and it also, just doesn't, it doesn't make it, it, it. Her problem here, and I guess we'll get into the clip is like the, the using the word fascist to describe Trump. And her argument is literally, well, he tries to do fascist things. Sure, sure, sure. I'll give you that. I'll give you, he tries to do those things, but they don't actually happen. 
it's like okay but what the f if you try to do fascist things you sound like a fascist that seems like a reasonable standard yeah let yeah. us feel real good about ourselves i'm not trying to discount it but we have a system in also while you're listening to her i think it's so i because i'm doing this now in real time because i didn't do it earlier look at jenk's face while she's talking place yeah. okay we have a judicial system it went through the courts it was challenged in the courts and it was struck down no it, yeah so, i got so, you so, Anna, so but i'm not going to take it so number one they've completely upended our judiciary with all their nominees and which they passed through thankfully mm -hmm. biden has reversed a little bit of it but at the top of the supreme court you have a crazy supreme court that just had granted him absolute immunity and yep. you're putting your faith uh, that that they're going to be a, any kind of meaningful check on Trump's use of authority, get real. And 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 the way you can tell us she's saying it, I, I don't even know if she believes what she's saying because holy crap, his whole goal is to to destroy those checks, to centralize authority. And so for you to cite the things that he's trying to destroy, you just heard Mike Johnson say, we want to take a, uh, we want to destroy the administrative state. What were a lot of the checks on Trump's power? Well, someone in the chat state. said it. Some, uh, yeah, Sally Yates was the acting attorney general at the time. She, she stopped enforcement of the first version of the, of the travel ban because she said it was unconstitutional. A lot of insiders uh, in the administrative state did brave things and upheld their constitutional oaths. They're actively saying we are going to change that. And they have a Supreme Court who has said the executive branch is a branch unto itself. And they're fully going to accept this unitary executive theory. And so and let, Anna is so wrong. And let's apply her logic to a hypothetical here. So let's say somebody uh, goes to a Trump rally and tries to shoot at him, but is, uh, Trump is protected by protective glass. The logic here is, well, you should let that guy go to the second rally because glass worked the first time. So there's not yeah, really 100%. a risk there. It's 100%. Yes, of course. Right. It, it, and of course, it, it, it's, it invokes the, uh, that famous uh, Sideshow Bob Simpsons clip where he's like, oh, attempted murder. Did they give you know, a Nobel Prize for attempted chemistry? Yeah. Yes, it turns out that I mean, attempting yeah. to do a bad thing is still a bad thing, even if you're not successful. And we haven't even I discussed mean, she, the, she, the rhetoric that Trump uses regularly today at a rally. Let me just read you what Trump said. He said, Democrats are evil and professional thieves intent on stealing elections and destroying America. He said that if he loses, Jewish voters would have a lot to do with the result. He called Harris mentally disabled and mentally impaired, claiming she was born that way. He also called her regarded at a private dinner for donors. Um, and and by the way, it's important to point like she was she didn't wheel out this argument in front of Jank, I don't believe. Um Maybe she does. I just might not remember. But but on Twitter, she she extended this by saying something like, "Well, you know, if Trump is such a fascist, why does he have record support from minority communities? Like as if these right. two things are <laughs> no, no, no. Well, that's like, so. <laughs> wait a minute. That's so important. That's so important because I want you to make note of that because I responded to that, and it's oh, relevant to something she says here. Pay very close attention. Keep it in the back of your mind. Trump has record high support among minorities. Ergo, he can't be a fascist." a chance on a guy who says i'd like to ban you and your family because you guys are so dirty and inferior to us he says arrest them and deport them no i know he says that okay so, so is how he going to try to do that of course he's going to try to do that how would that process work considering the majority of these individuals are american citizens and i'm actually we're going to skip to that part but i do want to return to peace go and maybe you can lay out some ways because i understand i understand where some people have a hard time fathoming you know, this idea that the executive can do things extra legally or extra judiciously, judicially, you know, in, in terms of how they exercise their powers. So maybe you could give a plausible hypothetical of how an unlawful order from Trump, be it like deporting, you know, uh, migrants or some of the other unhinged things that Trump wants to do. So just think about that for just a second. We'll skip to, again, think about the record support among minorities. Alt. He doesn't care about Muslim lives one bit. Donald Trump is deeply racist and he says deeply racist things, okay? So that's the big <laughs> one right there. She's in the very same screed in which she says he can't be a fascist. And then to Akana Boy's point goes afterwards and say, I also think he can't be a fascist because he has record high support from minorities. Then how the f by that could rationale, racist? could he be a racist? Are you serious? Now, the answer, of course, is of course he can still be a racist and still enjoy record support or an increasing support from minorities. And he can still be a fascist and still enjoy increasing support from minorities. This because, is, yeah. This is, this is literally the Candace Owens, like, or I have a black friend thing. 
How, yes. How can I be racist if I have a black? How can I be a fascist if, um, you know, I have and, and that doesn't follow, right? How can I be a fascist if I have black people can be fascist? I, right. I don't know what to say. Like, what is the connection between between race and fascism? Now, there is there can be an ideology where race is a central component of a fascist dictatorship, whatever, right? Yeah, I can understand that in group, out group, whatever. But there's nothing that says racial minorities cannot themselves be fascist and the out group that is uh, being sort of discriminated against in the fascist regime is some other minority group. So it doesn't even make any kind of intuitive sense. Of course. I want to make a distinction between Donald Trump, the person who says and does racist things and the notion of a fascist. Because look, if we're just going to use fascist toward anyone we dislike, we don't. All right, then the word doesn't we actually don't. mean anything. Okay, what do you want? It does. <laughs> we don't, and it does. So you know, I dislike you, you Anna, <laughs> and I don't call you a fascist. Did you guys know that that's that's apparently what we meant the whole time? That's why we're calling Trump a fascist is because we don't like him. So on here, like I mean, look, we we didn't see Democratic we, we didn't see Democratic nominees calling Trump uh, a fascist up until this election cycle, and we certainly didn't see Democratic nominees doing that in historical election cycles against Republicans. Like major, you know, certainly you could find some cra crazy radical leftists are going to say, you know, the Democrats are fascist because they're capitalist or whatever. But like, it just it just generally isn't the case that you find a lot of mainstream Democrats saying every single Republican's a fascist, but it is the case that you find a lot of mainstream Republicans saying Democrats want to implement Marxism because we want an expansive welfare state, right? We're, I mean, these aren't very fair descriptors, but his, it seems his, like the Republicans are more guilty of them. His own generals called him a fascist. These are people that are not like they, these, these are people that have studied. They just do that to everyone, Hutch. They, they have, these because they people, don't like him, Hutch. These people are academics. So they, stu they studied fascist governments throughout history. Yeah, in liberal uh, institutions, Hutch. His they, own they got corrupted by the woke mind. Generals, virus. for Christ's sakes. I feel like that gives us complete permission to run with fascism. If Millie and Wait Mattis saying, you... and, and, uh, and, and Kelly are saying it, yeah. give me a f break. People who got fired. You want me to say wannabe dictator? Uh, sure, you can say like, wannabe dictator, but I don't even think he wants to be a dictator. Of course he does. That's what you do when you lose an election and you go, oh, I got fake electors and, and I'd like to terminate the Constitution and bring out the tanks and use martial law against American citizens and shoot protesters. Yeah, but not oh a dictator God. way, Jenk. By the way, Jenk, Josiah is not playing for the most part Jenk's arguments against Anna. Jenk cooked in this clip. Like he yeah. did a really good job countering Anna's bull here. And again, it's, this is someone who I've followed for a long time, that I've respected for a long time. I mean, I wouldn't say disrespect Anna or anything like that, but it's just, she's making really bad arguments here. These are not good arguments. They're not reasonable. They're not well thought out. It doesn't seem like they're not. It, it makes me think plausible. that she doesn't, it makes me think that she doesn't know what fascism means. Like it makes me think that she literally just doesn't know what the well, word means. She, she, literally she very much, she very much Twitter. demonstrated that when she tried to define fascism in her tweet and it just, it just didn't make sense. Wait, right? hold on. What uh, tweet? Pull that tweet up. I haven't seen this. Yeah, so so she basically copied and pasted something that a a Twitter user replied with, and then she kind of co-opted. I'm pretty like almost word for word, um, somebody who reply guyed her in agreement. Like, yeah, fascism means Anna's right. You know, Trump's authoritarian. Fascism is this, 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 and oh she basically just totally snatched the whole thing. Uh, oh my god, this is yeah. so stupid. She no, she literally doesn't know. That's yeah. a that's a tweet right there. Yeah, let me pull it up here real quick. Like, why would you type this out? Like, why would you not just copy and paste from Wikipedia? Like, if you don't know what it is, why would you do this? Yeah, let me see here. Yeah, and I mean it's 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 important to uh, oh you have the tweet up now okay yeah yeah okay fine I'll bite fascism requires a militarized citizenry conquest imperialism the elimination of our governing bodies like Congress and the notion that anyone and, who isn't part of and the notion that anyone who isn't part of a master race should be massacred weird thing to label a guy who brags about not starting any new wars he also <laughs> passed criminal justice reform and personally pardoned black inmates who were serving life sentences for drug crimes who Obama was unwilling to pardon. And then, he and, stupid and then he complained that the, you know, black voters didn't turn out for him in 2020. He reportedly was like, why did I pass that law if they didn't vote for me? 
Wait, can I can we just say like so even just analytically let's analyze let's take 30 seconds she says all of these are necessary conditions she uses the word and not like uh you know it, it tend to be anything she says it requires they're necessary conditions so that by by their own logic each one of those things is can you put a, put it up again um yeah just i don't even stuff. think conquest and imperialism are necessary same with no of course not militarized citizenry i don't think that is so, necessary either no. under this under, under this whole thing right so Hitler, anytime he isn't in power, is not a fascist because right. obviously he hasn't done those things, right? <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Obviously, Hitler, to the extent that he's um, he's not eliminating governing bodies when he's uh, yeah, the know, Reichstag was had, still was still the Reichstag, the, the, yeah. the, the other institutions. He's yeah. just like they're just rubber stamp organizations. They Mussolini just, himself, he Mussolini yeah. did not have this racial puritanism with his fascism, but Mussolini can't be a fascist because he didn't have a, a racial. The Nazis element. weren't massacring, uh, you know, minorities really. Pri they were like mostly just discriminating against them, and you know, prior to their their genocidal activities, like in the lead up in the in the 30s, uh, they were oftentimes massacring themselves and like internal struggles in the night of the long knives and yeah, so does it, she, it really well here's the real ahead. question does she think a literal neo-nazi is a fascist because neo-nazis aren't in power not. they don't have there's no conquest slash imperialism they don't have a militarized citizenry you know they're just white supremacists um who idolize the third reich would she say no you're, you're not a fascist because you're not really in a position to do anything about it it's just so stupid also, if any country has a military citizenry i mean america has was one of the most well-armed citizenries we have a the robust most well national guard yeah. system like i just don't understand and if all these are necessary conditions oh! just, what wait no no no! i'm so glad you mentioned the national guard where is this 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 aha right here buddy right here okay based on what people like general milley have told us he wanted to turn the military against American citizens during the George <laughs> Floyd protests. That is 1,000% a fascist action. He also literally tried to stage a coup to overthrow the election results when he lost. This was Anna's response. Many governors did use the National Guard to respond to George Floyd protests. I guess everyone is a fascist. Thank you for your wiki expertise. Appreciate it. Did you know that? No. Fascism she... is when anytime you National Guard. No, he, yeah, he was the 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 National Guard the, from Trump was was proposed to be used on peaceful protests. It's, there's a difference between uh, governors using the National Guard when there's actual rioting going on. Um, right. You and then, and then how do you leave out like when you're talking about fascism? There, like the, fascism is difficult to define, but there there are some agreed upon characteristics, like ten or twelve characteristics. Arguably, the most important one is having a charismatic leader that has a cult of personality. How do you not yeah, include that in your definition? Right, that that ha that's animated by a sense of you know aggrieved status that you know yearns for a more you know like a halcyon time way back when you know it's resistant to science. It's based on chauvinism ba on the country, national so chauvinism. Uh, there's a racist component as well. Yeah, yeah. You, you look sometimes at sometimes hyper religious, Echoes. sometimes hyper yeah. religious. Yeah. Right. So it's just it's so absurd. And and uh, before we go, I do want to do wanna briefly since you guys did mention it, talk about the Adam Sitch thing, because uh, this was funny. I did laugh. Um, but does anyone else have anything that they want to say about um, whatever the I fuck think, this is? I think the fundamental part of fascism, which is is certainly universal to all the fascist governments that I can think of, I mean, it's almost a necessary thing when it comes to fascism, whether you're talking about Franco Spain or Mussolini's Italy or Hitler's Germany or you know or even Peron or these other you know other examples of fascist governments across history the one thing that unites them is a degradation and an eventual elimination of democratic horizontal political power sharing institutions right like that is like a like of the few uniting things of fascist governments that is the one right and of course this makes sense because Hitler wouldn't want free and fair elections because people probably wouldn't vote for Hitler after they realized how much of an insane person he was once he actually finally got power. Um, and this is something that characterizes Trump, right? You deny election results, you use state power to try and co-opt election results, you promise to do that if you take state power. Again, use the court system uh, to try and get your way despite Democratic results. Um, and, you know, at this point he has immunity from anything uh, that he does right. in office. That in and, and of itself. These are fascists. That, that's something that Jenk obviously, and I understand there's so much, you know, happening in real time. He's watching his, you know, dear friend and colleague have a psychotic break on stage. 
you know, but yes, the context has changed. You know, what Trump did when he was in power was prior to Trump the United States, um, which is, if anything, going to, uh, you know, um, exacerbate any sort of fascistic and authoritarian tendencies he has. And the whole point of the second Trump administration, should it occur, Trump is very clear about this, he's going to remove the guardrails. The people who are calling Trump fascists are, as Sam Harris said during his debate with Ben Shapiro, the guardrails themselves. General Kelly, General Milley, General Mattis, those were the guardrails, and they will be absent in a second Trump administration, and we're just kind of left to Trump's you know, uh, tender mercies. It's possible. I want to be clear about this because this is something I've, I've doubled down on. It's entirely possible that a second Trump administration, that he does just kill the investigations into him and f off and golfs and lets whoever – whoever becomes his chief of staff, God forbid, somebody like you know Stephen Miller, run the country. It's possible that he does that. I still think you know, making him president would be disastrous for two reasons, because the people he would appoint are themselves independently terrible. And also, too, it would reward Trump for all the terrible things that he did as he was leaving office. So I just want to be clear. None of us here are committed with 100 percent certainty that Donald Trump is going to be a full-blown aggressive fascist, even though he says he's going to be. It still doesn't justify rolling the dice and giving him the, the keys to the Oval Office.